like to invite former Ambassador Edward Peck to come up and say a few words about the Rumi Forum and Interfaith Dialogue and the importance of this evening. Please welcome him. <laughs> Well, I am not only honored by this opportunity, but a little, a little put off by the distinguished people I saw in your video. Um, I had the, good, the great good fortune to be invited to take one of the trips to Turkey organized by the Rumi Forum. My wife and I had a very moving experience going to the schools, both lower education and higher education, and going to the newspapers, being entertained by and received by families who are active in the movement. And we came back thoroughly impressed with what the organization stands for. I am a retired diplomat. Uh, diplomats, uh, you'll forgive me, I have a very active sense of humor, uh, which is not something to be proud of if you're a diplomat. But anyway, the, a, a diplomat, as you may know, is someone who can tell you to go to hell in a manner that makes you look forward to the trip. <laughs> uh, but, but diplomacy has its place, and that's what the Rumi Forum talks about. Talk to people, listen to people, don't express opinions, think. Uh, I have the great good fortune since I've retired to spend a fair portion of my time lecturing on cruise ships. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. And I have worked up a series of lectures called Thinking About Our World, an effort to provoke thoughts, not people. Because most people that we deal with don't think. They have opinions, and they're not going to change their minds. So I always tell people that there's no reason in the world for you to agree with anything I tell you. But I'd just like to ask you to think about things, because most people don't do that. When I give my first lecture, I pull from my pocket a piece of paper and I said, I have written authorization from the captain of this ship to ask you to think. <laughs> now, people won't do this to you very often, so to ease the shock and trauma, I will tell you when, okay? Think, think. Optical illusion, optical illusion. Raise your hand. If in the last uh, 72 hours you've experienced an optical illusion. Oh, good for you, sir. But anybody wearing glasses ought to have their hand up. Isn't that what this does? <laughs> How about taking a photograph of the people really that small? A microscope, a telescope? Eyeglasses make things look clearer and closer, but they're not. That's an optical illusion. But when I say optical illusion, you think of the vase that looks like two people kissing. Because you're not thinking about it. Uh, this works sometimes with some people. On occasion, especially if you're dealing with Americans and talking about the world, it's a little harder. Uh, I always introduce myself as a Middle East expert. And I say I can make that statement with some confidence because unlike most Americans, I know where it is. Okay. And off in the Middle East, where the Rumi Foundation works, where Fatullah Gulen came from, that's a place that needs what they teach. Dialogue, tolerance, accepting other people's views. What an objective. What a task. How hard is that to do? I was quite interested a few months ago when the American government had a group of <clears throat> members of our Congress stand up and say, in Afghanistan and in Iraq, the parties must learn the importance of power sharing. Well, we're certainly the people to tell them about that, aren't we? You know? There's a certain level of arrogance here, I think, because our way is not only the right way, it's the only way. And if you don't agree, we'll show you just how right our way is. Tolerance, think of that. Open-mindedness, dialogue, listening, learning. What an objective. What a difficult, difficult task. I'm really very honored to be here, um, very gratified by it. <clears throat> when I went to, the, to Rumi's tomb, some of you may have been there, 
that is really a very, very impressive place to be. Um, and to, to read some of the writings, some of the thoughts that Rumi had all those many centuries ago, and to find that there are people still pushing his noble ideas is very impressive, and I'm honored to have a chance to say a few words about it. Thank you very much.